Good morning to all of you. Welcome to our monetary policy conference, as Kazimiri has already welcomed you. Um, as usual, we will um, share with you the decision of the monetary policy committee, which is to keep the repo rate unchanged at 7%. And this rate, the committee deems it appropriate to maintain the one-on-one -on -one link between the Namibia dollar and, and the rent and without at the same time compromising economic growth in Namibia. So that's the decision of the committee. And um, as usual, we will give you a quick summary of the economic developments that explain that decision of the Monetary Policy Committee. When you were here last time, we shared with you the picture of the global economy, um, and we were comparing 2016 to, to 2015. Um, and what we shared with you was that global economic growth performed a little bit weaker in, in 2017 compared to 2015. Um, that time we shared with you that the difference is not that big, it's not significant, because in 2015 the global economy grew by 3.2, it weakened a little bit to 3.1. As you can see, it's, it's a marginal difference, it's a very small difference, so it's not big. So, in other words, the recovery in the world economy remained flat in, in 2016. We also shared with you that prospects for 2017 look better, and that has now been confirmed by the latest release of the IMF forecast, which project um, the global economy to grow in the region of 3.5% um, for 2017, as I again compared to 3.1. So that's an improvement. Maybe not the biggest that we what we want, but it's it's a positive positive sign that things are are looking better for 2017 compared to 2016. And this is on account of um, of advanced countries, but mainly the U.S. Um, because growth in the U.S. is expected to be um, in the region of 2.3% compared to where it was in 2016 at 1.6%. But this is also supported by uh, what is called the emerging market countries and developing countries, which are also improving in terms of um, their growth performance or growth performances, more so by countries such as Russia and Brazil, which have been in negative territories all along for the past two, three years or so. Um, these countries have, um, have seen a contraction, a actual contraction in, uh, in output. In other words, their growth rates were negative. Um, they are now expected to be in the positive territory, with Russia already in the positive territory, and Brazil expected to be in the positive territory this year, in, in 2017. Mm -hmm. So this is already adding to, you know, adding some force to um, the momentum that we that China has kept and India has kept. As you know, these two countries have been um, pulling the growth in the right direction, the growth in the emerging and, and developing countries with China, um, China's growth hovering in the region of um, 6.9, um, averaging 6.5, and India slightly more than that in the, in, the, in the region of 7%. So now if you add positive growth rates to, from Russia and Brazil, um, you can see the momentum picking up in the growth for their emerging markets and, and developing countries. Um, the story is not as, as rosy for, for another emerging market economy, which is our neighbor, unfortunately, South Africa. You, you have seen um, the data that came, came, came out for the first quarter of 2017 that um, the economy continued to contract by 0.7% in the first three months of 2017. And this has come from the fourth quarter already of, uh, of 20, 2016, when the economy contracted by about 0.3%. Uh, so we can see for two consecutive quarters, uh, the South African economy has actually registered a, a decline in, in output. Um, which is not good news for us because South Africa being, being a neighbor, South Africa being one of the biggest, in fact, the biggest countries in, uh, in this region, 
and on the continent, one of the biggest in the, on the continent, is not good news for, for all of us. So we want to see South Africa get, getting better because it's in our own interest if the South African economy is, is growing. When it comes to economic activities at, at, uh, at home here in Namibia, the picture we have seen in 2016 is still continuing, but again, as we shared with you, we expect things to look much better in, in 2017 compared to 2016. 2016 was a very difficult year. Um, you have seen that um, the figures released by the, Nash, Nash, um, the Namibia Statistics Agency um, that growth for 2016 was only a small number, almost close to zero, 0 0.2. Um, 2017, we expect things to improve a little bit, um, but not significantly better. We, we don't expect it to be in the region of 6% where we were in, in 2015. But the fact that the momentum will be shifting and will be shifting in the right direction, that's already positive news. And that's what we, we see in, um, that's what we expect in 2017. So if we look at the first four months of, of um, 2017, we see weaknesses in, in sectors such as construction. I'm sure this is not... This is not a surprise to you. Um, we see weaknesses in manufacturing. We see weaknesses in uh, sectors such as transport. Um, but there are, there, are also, there are also sectors that are, that are in the positive territories, and that's good news. For instance, uh, um, um, diamond mining last year was contracting. Uh, we have seen better prospects for diamonds this year. And that's, that's good news because the diamond, the diamond sector is, uh, or subsector is one of the important subsectors in this economy. And therefore, when you see my diamond getting better, we, 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 we should actually um, feel a bit pleased because it means that government is getting, going to get more revenue. Um, and, and therefore, um, that, that's a good development to, to all of us. We also see gold, of course, gold production, um, you know, again, improving in output. We see zinc production, also better performance. We also expect better growth performance in the agricultural sector because of the better rains that we have received, not only in Namibia, but in the whole um, Southern African region. So these sectors, we expect them, especially mining to, and, and agriculture to some extent, to help to improve the growth performance in, um, in Namibia. Unfortunately, growth is not going to be widely spread. Um, it, it's going to be concentrated. As I said, mining will be, will be key and uh, probably not be felt by everybody. But the good, good news is that this momentum is, 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 a post, is shifting in the right direction. When it comes to inflation, um, we have also seen inflation of late, um, the rate of the, the inflation rate coming down. Um, I think last time when we were here, we shared with you the January figure and even the February figure, um, where inflation was in the region of 8.2% in January, and uh, that was quite a, a significant increase compared to where we came from. We have now seen inflation coming down, and uh, for the month of April, uh, we are now standing at 6.7 uh, for April. So this slowdown or coming down in the rate of inf inflation is, is, a, is a welcome development. And that's on account of food production. As you know that uh, food prices were elevated, were under pressure because of the drought. Um, we, as I said, this year is a better year to all of us in Namibia and in the region. So we have also then seen food prices softening. And as a result, inflation, inflation is coming down. For the whole year, we expect the average inflation to be in the region of 6.9%, uh, of so roughly there. So we do not expect inflation to run away. It will continue to be within manageable levels uh, going forward. Credit, that, that's um, our favorite topic. Again, the trend is the same as before. It's declining. We have now seen uh, information up to April. Um, where the rate at which credit is growing is still growing, but it's growing at a, at a, at a slower speed uh, than before. Um, it's now growing in the region of 8.6%. Uh, 
if we compare that to where we were in the corresponding period of 2016, where credit to the private sector um, was growing by 13%, is again a significant slowdown in the pace at which credit is growing. And we can see this in, in, um, in businesses, or credit going to businesses. We can also see this in credit going to, um, to the individuals. For businesses, as we said, businesses, uh, our message is that this is the right time to take credit and invest, not take credit and, and spend on unproductive things. Take credit and invest because we believe interest rates are still historically low and, and therefore let's invest in the economy, let's create jobs and let's make this economy more productive because I think over the past few years this economy was shifting towards being a more consumption economy. We're all consuming but this, this consumption was, was uh, financed by debt, and, that's, and you know very well that's not sustainable, whether it's at the household level, whether it's at the national level, or at the business level. For individuals, again, slow down, which is a welcome development, because individual debt has been elevated. We have preached about it, that we, it's time to save and reduce our debt. Um, let's not finance consumption with too much debt, because that is going to create problems for, for us, and that is going to create problems for the whole economy. So it's a welcome development to see a slowdown um, on credit which is going to the household. So let's continue doing that, tighten our belt, and save more so that we can mobilize enough savings that is going to be invested and, um, and help us to create a solid foundation for, for a better future. When it comes to international reserves, um, things have improved or international reserves have, imp have improved compared to where we were before. I think when we were here, we believe that we shared with you that at uh, that time we were still at seven months, or oh, sorry, 2.7 months of import cover. I would want to reach seven one day. 2.7 months of import cover. We are now standing at 3.7 months of import cover. And that's on account of um, we have seen inflow of money coming from outside, especially money belonging to institutional investors that are investing more money here than in, uh, keeping, uh, keeping that, or but they are still keeping money outside, but some of that money is being, is being repatriated or is, is returned to invest in, in the domestic economy. It, a, a trend that we want to continue seeing. Um, and so as a result, the official reserves of the country have now improved. Um, so that's a quick summary of um, the economic developments that, um, that explain the, the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee. As I said, you know, the news, we have a mixed bag of news. We have, we have good news that inflation is falling. We have good news that the reserves have, have, uh, have improved. We have good news that, you know, some of our sectors um, are improving, um, especially in the mining sector, and that will, will uh, pull up growth a little bit, and therefore this year we are going to see more, more growth compared to last year. Um, and, of course, there are still... As I said, the bad news is that this growth is not widespread. It's not, it will not be felt in all the sectors. We still have sectors such as retail that will, that will be under pressure, um, sectors such as manufacturing that will be under pressure. Um, so this is, in essence, the summary of, um, of um, the economic developments. So I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. As I always understand it, it's also a very good indication of demand in the economy. And as this would also point to less demand in the economy, isn't it also a sign maybe that, that uh, people are taking less credit because of the slowdown in the economy? Um, maybe if you can just comment as to what causes the slow growth in credit and whether that's actually healthy. As I understand it, the central bank is actually quite quite welcoming the slow and credit growth, especially in the installment credit, if you could just maybe comment on that. And the other one was regarding um, the inflows of money by institutional investors. Um, are these foreign investors or are these local investors, uh, Namibians, or doesn't that actually matter? Does it just matter that it's money that was kept outside of the country that's being brought in back in Namibia? And maybe if you can just clarify, maybe just explain to me what kind of investments these are. Thank you. Last year, you launched the Credit Agreement Act, and uh, it, one of the main reasons was uh, to boost foreign reserves. Uh, would you say thus far it has paid dividend? On page 2.4, um, 
it says downside downside risks to the 2017 global growth outlook include a shift to inward oriented policies which may reduce trade and cross border investment flows um we currently have the NIF issue. One can also regard this as an inward-oriented policy. What is the central bank's stance on this? Because uh, according to this, uh, it's not quite the way to go as far as uh, boosting trade and cross-border investment flows are concerned. Um, secondly, perhaps just the issue of sorry, the issue of the recent. Uh, downgrade of major banks by Moody's. I think it was over the weekend or so on, on Monday. Um, Standard Bank was one of them. Net Bank was one of them. Is it perhaps a cause of concern here across the border? When you borrow, you borrow to go and spend and buy something. So and therefore, if the rate at which credit is growing, it means the rate at which we were borrowing to, to go and buy something, it's, it's softening. As I said, it's still, we are still borrowing. It's not that... Um, um, Credit is not is, is shrinking. It's not shrinking. It's actually still growing, but it's just growing at a faster speed and it's a slower speed than than, than before. Um, are we concerned about it? Well, as, especially when it comes to household, as I said, household debt remains elevated. So I think this is probably time to to, to slow down, apply brakes, so that we reduce our debt. Um, and it's not only for the good of the household. It's, a, it's for the good of of all of us for the whole economy because if we you must look at it this way when you when you when you borrow to go and buy something the likelihood is that this something that you're going to buy is going to be imported it's going to come from outside so two two things that you are creating two negative things that you're creating one you're creating debt for yourself and and for the bank system which can become a national problem we have seen what has happened in the u.s in 2009 2008 so that too much credit is not good for, for the individual and it's not good for the whole economy. So that's one. The second thing that you are creating, you are also then spending the foreign exchange of the country. So you're creating two problems. So if you were going to, going to borrow and buy a machine, this machine is going to produce something, and this something is probably some, something that you can export and, and sell to somebody and earn more foreign exchange. But if you just borrow... And, um, and spend money outside, it means, in fact, in, in fact, what you are doing is that you are allowing Namibia's income to leave this country to go elsewhere. Because you will no longer be able to, to um, support this spending if you are not for any foreign exchange. You, it means you have to, for you, for you to continue to live the same life, you need to borrow from outside. So that's, in essence, what you are doing. So you continue to borrow from outside and therefore pay your income to outsiders, and there's a country you become more poor and poorer. So uh, if you look at the total picture, that's basically what it, what it comes down to. Namibia will become more poorer if we continue to borrow more, buy more things from outside, and we'll end up borrowing from foreigners to be able to finance our consumption. That's what, that's what we, that's, that's, that will be the result. So from that perspective, it's not good. So we must look at it that way, that yes, let's, we can borrow as long as we can we are able to borrow sustainably. So, but if you are going to borrow and rely on other people's income, pay back that income, it, becomes, it means we are becoming poorer and poorer as a, as a nation. What is contributing to this? Of course, as you said, um, demand in the, in the economy is, is slowing down. Yes, that's a good sign um, in some sense. But you should also see this as in the context of the measures taken earlier on. Interest rate have been increasing. Um, quite aggressively in 2015, I think, even before that, 16 to some extent, we have seen um, a requirement for a down payment. I think somebody asked that question. I cannot remember now. Uh, we'll come to that, a down payment when you want to buy a car. Um, of late, this, this year, we have introduced a down payment for, for mortgages, secondary mortgages. A combination of, of all these things are also applying some breaks on the, on the rate at which the household um, is, is taking up credit because credit has become more expensive and it has become a bit more difficult to obtain. In my view, um, that's a good sign and that's, that's what we were hoping for when, on, when all these measures were introduced. So I think I have also then covered um, the question on, uh, on the Credit Agreement Act. So as I said, it, it's, it was one of the measures that were, that were introduced to try and, and put some brakes on 
on the rate at which we, we were taking up credit. Um, the foreign or the, the money that has been that has come in for what we said uh, an inflow of, of money from outside yes you're right um, it's institutional investor, investors but these are local not foreign it's, it's basically our, our pension funds that are now bringing money here um, because some of the money that was invested in what is called dual listed shares um, it's now being in, it's now invested in in true Namibian assets, so this money is coming back to Namibia. And uh, we want to see more of this, more of Namibians, Namibia savings invested in the, in the domestic economy because that's going to create more life for, for, the, for, for Namibia and is going to develop the financial markets in Namibia. So it, it's a good development. Probably about five years ago, the regulation changed to, such, to, to, to the effect that um, if you were... As a pension fund, or a long-term insurer, if you, you had money in what is called a dual-listed share, in other words, you, you, you invest in a company which is listed on, on the stock exchange in South Africa primarily, but also that, that company has listed itself here in Namibia as, as a secondary listing. They, say they, they, they have two, these two categories, primary listing, and usually they, they will be in Johannesburg, and secondary listing on the Namibian stock exchange. So if you had invested in that share as a Namibian pension fund, that, that would qualify 100% as a domestic asset. Although you, the money is in South Africa, it will qualify as a domestic asset. That has now changed. Pension funds and long-term insurance are only allowed to invest um, a certain percentage in dual listed for them to qualify for local asset requirements. So that has, has been tainted a bit, and, um, and it's something that has come, come probably from, from five years ago, and it's, uh, it's just taking, taking more root now, and, and that's why we are seeing this kind of inflow of, of money coming in. But it's also the fact that, uh, maybe the fact that, and this is, I will be speculating here, that South Africa has been downgraded. I think our, our institutional investors are also realizing that it, it, it may be better to, to park and invest some of the money at home than, and then keeping it in South Africa. Um, because the risk profile in South Africa has changed a little bit. Um, but I think the biggest driving force is really the fact that the regulation changed some, some time ago and is now being implemented. Credit Agreement Act and, um, and, and um, the impact thereof on Forex, I think what, we, what, we, what we, uh, we are trying to emphasize is that anything that is curving credit, and if you know credit is financing, imports, it's good for Forex. As I explained before, um, foreign exchange comes from if we export more and we import less. Um, of late, we have seen the import numbers slowing down. In, in fact, last time when we were here, we said the growth at which we're importing or the pace at which we're importing um, has slowed down. Of late, we have actually seen imports declining in absolute terms. Um, we were importing a lot of cars. You know, remember that uh, you know, installment credit was running in the region of 20%. Um, it has now significantly slowed down. So we have, when you also look at car sales, it's, it's uh, registering negative numbers now um, in terms of growth. So this has contributed to the import bill coming down. And if the import bill is coming down, exports increasing a little bit more, even staying at the same level, reserves will have to increase because it means we are spending less money outside than we used to spend before. So anything that, that slows down um, demand, especially uh, demand for imports, will be good for, for reserves accumulation. So, but you, sh you should see it as, you know, as, um, as a result of a combination of things, not only, not only the Credit Agreement Act, um, all these measures that we have taken from government to consolidate, it means government expenditures less, um, and therefore it means less money going to the economy to spend on imports, which is also important for, for us to, to accumulate reserves. So all, a combination of all these factors have actually helped to improve reserves. And we were all, we were given an opportunity to comment on NIEF. The Bank of Namibia had that opportunity, and we, uh, we, uh, we made use of that opportunity to provide input, so we are expecting uh, the new draft that will come out from the Prime Minister's office to see whether 
um, how, how, how the new framework will look like. So at the moment, I think it will be premature to, to talk about it without really knowing what the new NIF looks like. So I think let's spark that discussion and come, come, to, come to that once the, the South Africa, once we have a new a reverse draft. And I believe there will be a reverse draft soon. I have seen that. I have seen the prime, prime minister talking about it you know, on TV some, some, some days ago. So let's wait for that. Downgrades, yeah, downgrades. Well, we, we're still trying to understand the, the impact of that. Um, at the moment, we don't see um, a significant impact on, on our banks here, although some of those banks that you have mentioned uh, um, are also operating in Namibia. Um, it's still, we, at the moment, we don't, we don't see um, negative consequences as, as a result of that at the moment, but it's something that we're still looking at. Um, I believe that is also just reacting to, to what has happened already. The country has been downgraded. South Africa as a country has been downgraded. And, uh, and, and, and probably the logical uh, step is also for some of those institutions to be downgraded. But it's, it's still early days for me to have a firm, a firm view on that. In light of the recession, has this prompted you perhaps to relook at your uh, to have a relook at the growth forecast for 2017, and um, uh, payment, and then also on the issue of credit. Pay, there's, the, there's the issue of payment holidays and 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 incentive packages by by dealers. What is what is what is your uh, what is your comment on the matter? Local assets, is that the ratio 60-40, and how much of that has been achieved so far? If you say there's been an increase in investing in local assets with pension funds and so forth. Let's talk about prospects for growth for 2017 and in, in view of what is happening in South Africa. Yeah, as I said, South Africa is our big neighbor. The two economies are, are closely linked to each other, highly integrated with one another. Um, so any, any negative performance of the South African economy or poor performance of the South African economy is something that is of concern to us because we sell some of our products there, meat we sell, fish we sell, and we get tourists, tourists from South Africa. So um, it's an important economy for us, especially for our products. Um, and, and therefore, if the economy is contracting, we will be concerned. What will be the impact on our growth forecast? We are busy and we are in the final stages of finalizing our out, outlook numbers for, for 2017. Within a couple of um, weeks or so, we will be able to share with you what is our growth forecast. But what is important to point out now is that we still believe that 2017 will be a better year than 2016 um, in terms of prospects of growth. Um, but as to what will be the exact number B, um, that's a number that we can share with you once the outlook numbers are finalized. And as I said, it will be in a couple of weeks. So hopefully before the end of June or by around about by the end of June, we should be able to share with you the outlook numbers. Um, incentives by dealers. Well, I think dealers are... Um, entitled to provide incentives as long as those incentives do not violate the credit agreement act or any other law um, if they provide discounts to their to their customers that's that's okay the requirement is that whoever is buying must buying on credit must buy must put down a deposit so they should not try to uh, evade that because that would be illegal and uh, if anybody is doing that um, he should be reported or she should be reported to the police. So, but any other incentive that, um, that is being given, it's, it's not something that we are concerned about as long as, as it is done within the ambit of the law. Thank you. Pension funds, I, I think what we need to understand is that the, although the Minister of Finance, who is responsible for domestic asset requirement, has announced that the local asset requirement, which is called Regulation 28, is going to be adjusted for, and therefore um, the requirement will be to keep more of Namibian savings in Namibia than before, because at the moment you are, you are required to keep 35% in Namibia. 
uh, than before. The minister announced that he is busy considering to adjust this requirement upward. So in other words, it will be more than 35. Um, he has not yet finalized the new requirement. So we don't know whether it's going to be 36 or 40 or 50. Um, so that's still going to, that's still going to be announced. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure the minister and Amfisa are busy working on that. What has been happening is, or what, what we're talking about here is that um, a regulation was changed already. That very regulation was changed some time ago. I believe it's probably more, even more than five years ago. But it was changed progressively. Yeah? First of all, you have heard that um, pension funds are now required to invest a certain amount of their money, pension funds and the insurance, insurance uh, companies, in what is called unlisted entities. In other words, you invest in companies that are not listed on the stock exchange. One percent. You, you are now aware of that because that has been in the, in, in, in the making for quite some time. So that was one of the me new measures introduced probably about seven years ago. Um, so the second requirement was then, again, the same time, um, th that requirement was also introduced at the same time, that if you, if you are a, a domestic institutional or a local institutional manager, in other words, if you are a pension fund or if you are an insurance company and you part of the money that you're supposed to keep here, you keep it in, in, in a company which is, in essence, is not here, but it is listed on the stock exchange. Before, that qualified for you to comply with Regulation 2018. So the regulation was now changed that only a small bit, I think it's, it's only 10% of your investment there will qualify as a local asset. Yeah, you can still continue to invest, but if you are going to count whether you're complying with the regulation of domestic asset requirement, we will only count 10% of that investment as a local investment. The rest will not. The idea is, again, to try and enforce in, um, pension funds and, and uh, long-term insurance to invest in true Namibian assets and keep the money here. So that's, that's a, the logic behind that. So that's what now has been happening. That regulation is, is – because uh, it, it has come down progressively. I think first it was 100 percent counted as, as a local asset, and then it came to about 30 percent. Now it's only 10 percent, which will be counted as a, as a, as a local asset. And that rise, that small uptick you mentioned, mm. can we quantify that? Well, um, that's, because that's the question I really – that's the answer maybe. As, as to what will be the figures be, I, I, will not ha I will not have the figures now. I think we will have to look at the, at the balance of payment figures. Um, but we, we are only explaining that the inflows that we have seen coming in the economy, uh, you, you, you know some of this, you have, you have reported about them, you have seen GIPF buying in, in, Beng, in Bengwendu. Yes. Yeah, that's part of it. That's part, that's part, you, know, you can ask them that question. <laughs> I'm sure you can have a good discussion with them, so I, I don't know. Um, but that's part, of, that's, that's part of the money that we are talking about. I think the finance minister in his budget speech said that it would be pushed up from 35 to 45 um, percent, the, the domestic um, investments, I think. But as you said, it's still not, not finalized. But my question is, um, I've got two questions. The one is, if more domestic investment is required, you will see these um, unlisted investment pongs shooting up by companies, it's already happening. So, so quickly, f some companies are formed to borrow local money to invest locally, but first of all, they um, cash in nicely on investment management fees. And that has been the concern about the private sector. Um, is that a healthy development is my first question. And the second question is, apparently since the 1st of June, the export levy has come into force. Um, I tried to get the list and the percentage for the products or semi-processed -pro products to be um, exported from the Ministry of Finance, but I was unfortunately not very lucky. Um, will that export levy not also dampen our economic prospects? If you want to keep money in the economy, that money has to find a productive use. Because if it doesn't find a productive use, then it will just be for speculation. And, and speculation is not a good investment. Um, so, hand in hand with 
these regulations and the intentions are good. The intentions is that we as a nation save, but instead of using this, this, these savings to invest in our domestic economy, increase our productive capacity, create employment, and as you know, unemployment is a very serious problem in this country, um, this money is used elsewhere by other people who, have, who find better use of this money. So let's also try to find better use of this money. So it goes hand in hand with that responsibility. That right? if you keep the money here, where, where are you going to to um, to keep the money? Um, now, you you have seen the unlisting um, products that companies have introduced. You have also seen the regulation regulator changing a little bit because Namfisa, as a regulator, was concerned about if we bring back the money here, how is it going to be used? So. Um, you, if you talk to those who are investing in unlisted, they are also complaining that the regulation is too tight. But again, what, what we need to understand is that Namfisa is really trying to make sure that this money is, is going into, into productive investments, not just you know, being used for people to make, to create fees for themselves. Um, so th there is a balance there. Um, whether everything is okay or whether we still need to refine the regulation to make sure that the money really goes to productive investments. I think that's still something that we, we should continue to monitor. But the intentions are, in my view, the intentions are something that I support. Um, um, and it also goes in hand, hand in hand with um, and improving the financial infrastructure of the country. Um, you know, bringing more assets to the stock exchange for, for this money to find a home in those assets. Um, listing some, some more. Yeah. We have been talking about our banks must be listed so that some of this money, instead of being invested in Johannesburg or in London, can be invested in our banks here and our banks can use this money to, you know, to finance housing here in Namibia. And you see, you will have all these um, positive uh, spin-offs. Um, so listing of banks, listing of some of government entities. I think all these things are, are, going, are going to be helpful to improve the financial infrastructure in Namibia and become and making Namibia a vibrant economy. So the intentions are definitely something that I support, but I also agree with you that we must not just do it blindly. We must, we must make sure that we tighten the screws so that we, we um, stamp out you know, those um, unproductive activities where people just want to make money out of um, out of these savings. Export levy, I will, unfortunately, I, the news I have, I mean, the information I have is, is more or less what you have, but yes, the, the levy has, has now become effective. I don't have the list as to what is, what, what is going to be levied, um, but the idea is that, again, we are a producer of, of primary goods. We don't add value to our to our raw materials, we export them raw. And as you know that if we can add more value to our materials, we can create more employment. Again, we can make this economy more vibrant. So the that's a, a disincentive to try and discourage people from just exporting things raw and try to create an incentive for people to add more value so that we can create, create jobs. We can also make more money because as you know, money is made in the value chain. So if you can get make more money in the value chain of our raw materials, because the people who process those materials make, make more money than Namibia, who is the original source of those raw materials. So that's, that's the logic behind it. As to what is going to be levied, I, I, I have no information. I think the Minister of Finance will be in a better place to give you that information, unfortunately. <laughs>